Verbeek out to Babbitt. Krieger couldn't handle the pass. Francis reaches for it. He finds it. Centers right through Krieger's shot. Shoots. He scores. Krieger deflected it in front, and the Whalers score to make it one nothing. Well, on this power play, the Whalers did get control in the Hawks' end, and the result in the goal. You'll see Todd Krieger after the puck ends up on the stick of Brad Shaw, getting great position right in front of the net. You'll see the deflection pass Bob Murray. And over Elaine Chevier will see it from another angle here. But watch what Krieger does. He doesn't want to get in too tight. And as soon as the puck goes back to the point, he backs off his stride. And this allows him to get his stick on the puck and give the Whalers an early lead. And the Whalers deserve the lead and deserved a couple power plays because, quite frankly, in the first seven minutes, they've been skating a little better than the Hawks. Hawks change up. Babbage starts it ahead to Mike Tomlack. Secord finds the puck. 13-year veteran. And they move it around to Savard. He dances in, looks for Secord. He shoots, he scores! You talk about nostalgia, you go back a few years, and this happened 30 or 40 times during the season. It's a Savard pass to the veteran Al Secord, and he threw it over the glove hand of Peter Sidork, which great shot right here, right, right up top, right inside the post. Great shot by Al Secord. Watch this pass by Savard, perfect. You know, this was a great tandem along with L Larmer on the right wing in the years gone by. And one of my favorite hockey players I've dealt with is Al Secord. And I know this is a, a comeback try for him. And I wish he'd score against someone else, though. But it's certainly Black a classic goal, goal, and they got a lot of them in the past. Right? That ties it up at one. Savard assists on the goal. She gets it to Dennis Savard. Creighton's the other forward out there. Savard shoots, and a stick save by Sadorkovic. This trio has been red hot. Creighton has an 11 game point streak going for the Hawks. Murray shoots, stopped by Sadorkovic off his chest. Creighton. Leaves it behind, and then Lattisir gets to it. Hooked away by Larmer. Creighton in front. Savard shoots. He scores. Well, each team getting a power play goal. Dennis Savard was really playing all out this evening. He usually does, though. Now watch the break that Creighton does, gets, as no one knows what's happening here. He tries to stuff it. But it slips off the end of the stick, and you see Denny Savard. You see the look on his face. He got a break there and took advantage of it. We'll see coming over the left of your screen. Creighton, now he wants to put it in. I don't know why he made that extra move. He had plenty of room to put it on the short side, but it dribbled off his stick onto the stick of this man. A bold assist so far for this classy hockey player. I'll tell you, he looked like uh, he's going to be a dangerous guy tonight. And I suppose it all evens out over the course of the season. The Whalers go on the power play. They're one of two. Krieger's goal came with a man advantage. Denis flips it back to Francis. Wheels in front to Krieger. He's got the scores. Krieger on his own rebound has both Whaler goals. Well, well, I want to talk about something in a minute. But anyway, great work by Todd Krieger once again in front of the net. I don't think anyone could ever say that Todd Krieger is a homer. They'd be wrong there. Watch him fight off Larmer, then get position on Yanni. He even takes a check after to put in the rebound. But what I wanted to talk about, as the Whalers tie this game up, Pat Verbeek and Sutter were jawing at each other. And here's it again. The original shot will not go in, but watch the second effort here, and he bangs it past Chevier for a second Whaler power play goal. But Sutter and uh, Pat Verbeek were jawing at each other. Unbelievable. And Sutter, he's steaming. And because he took a dumb penalty, allowing the Whalers to get a power play goal. It finds Kastelik, and he left it for Larmer. It's a three on two. Larmer. And a center against Shaw. Puts it in front. Anderson gets back. So right. shoots, he scores! Now we better pack a lunch. This looks like an all day affair here at the stadium tonight. The line of Larmer. Secord and Dennis Savard. Savard just risks this under Randy Lattisur and inside the right post. What's the job Al Secord does in front? 
This is a strong suit, Secord. Getting everyone's attention in front of the net. And I would think the Oilers right now would have to go into a defensive scheme anytime Savard's on the ice with Larmer and Secord. It's the only way to stop him there. Savard, two goals and assists in this first 14 minutes. He must be a good pool player or something. We'll have to test him out. All he needs is money. <laughs> Here's Santa Pass out of his own zone, and it's a three on two for Chicago. He's kicked by Babbitt. Grant fires it front, deflected on goal, and a save by Sadarkovich. They score! Bob Murray on the rebound. Well, I don't know where Bob Murray comes from, but he had to be the fourth or fifth hawk going towards the net. I'll tell you, Peter Sadarkovich makes a great initial stop right here. This is tip towards him. You see at the screen, there's Murray. His three forwards are up front. Santa Pod does not see Murray. It might have been an easier goal, but Murray, someone has got to pick up Murray as he is the fourth man. I don't know if we'll get to see the save right here as it's deflected. A great save by Sadarkovich. And all of a sudden, Murray, coming from this other end, I guess, or at least from the blue line, gives the Hawks a two-goal lead. Young, as Scott Young was point blank. Francis back to the puck. Bob Murray and Eagles are on him. Here's Krieger centering, and it rolls all the way to Burke. Shoots. They score! Verbeek at screen. Chevry in front. We'll see who gets the goal. I don't know. This is a great shot. Chevy had no idea where the puck was. And I think Adam Burt will get credit for the goals. I believe it went in without deflecting off anyone's stick. Here's you see Burt, he's just going to take it towards the net. If this did hit anyone, it was a hawk halfway to the goal. But a good goal for the Whalers as they answer the Murray goal rather quickly. Here's this wrist shot. No, I don't believe this hit anyone. As you said, Rick, Pat Verbeek getting Trent Yanni right in front of Chevier. It looks like a bad goal, but Chevy couldn't do anything about it. Knox Tippett out of the way. Murray shoots, and his shot is wide. Savar fires it front into Creighton's leg. Larmer scores! I'll tell you one thing. Morrell missed a call here, and I don't want to sound like sour grapes, but I'll tell you that... Adam Creighton said it certainly got an interference call. It was way before this. The puck will be deflected over to the left. And Larmer, believe me when I tell you, does not miss opportunities like he just had right there. But the key is the Morrell really missing an interference call just seconds before this as Creighton took Tippett right out of the play. I'll tell you, it was obvious as the nose in your face, and this goal should have not counted. Ronnie Francis is now arguing with Morrell, and that's every bit as much as uh, of interference as Cunningworth on uh, Cam Russell in the second period. Oh, very much. Brutal fact, call. In fact, it wasn't a contest. Uh, it looked like Black Russell might have had a chance to have the puck when Cunningworth hit him, but Trippett, uh, Tippett was nowhere near the puck when he was taken out by Craig. Shaw chops it in. Yanni's pass reaches Larber. Now Krieger got tangled up with Van Dorp, and here's Savard in a long, shoots, he scores! Well, everyone was getting tied up, thinking Van Dorp was going to go after Krieger. They forgot about this man right here, number 18, and this is the hat trick as he just tees it up here and drills it past Peter Sidorkowicz, and we'll have a delay in this game as the hats are being tossed on the ice in honor of Dennis Savard's hat trick. It's his first of the year and his 11th of his career. He scores at 7 8 That was more or less like the, uh, the sleeper play in football. The guy coming off the sidelines as he sprinted down the right side, untouched. Yeah, he likes horses too. My type of a player, by the way. Guys that can play, love the game, and like horses. Well, Savard came into this game with 46 points. This being the uh, midway point of the uh, season for the Blackhawks. You could say he wasn't on a 100-point pace. However, tonight he has three goals and two assists, five points. 
And his role has been toned down a bit under uh, Keenan. But he's still getting the points. Well, as I said, Rick, when Troy Murray went down, I would have to say there's, you know, they're good checking the center, but he's getting more ice time. And he, he has to take the ball now with the injuries. But listen to this building saluting Dennis Savard. Because I think Quebec just took a big lead on him. It's 5 2. Look at this crew right here. Does anyone, I don't know if any, uh, how, how, how good our sports fans are watching this game, but believe it or not, there are two goaltenders. That's Darren Pang on the left with the mic. And Jacques Cloutier wondering what's going on here? How come he doesn't, how come he doesn't ask me any questions? Well, you know, Jerry, they reported to work as early as we did. Not that we get here early, but they were down at our uh, studio location. Darren uh, really likes to talk. He's pretty good. Oh. There's Steve Thomas uh, and Dave Manson up there as well. And, and uh, I guess Darren is doing a little TV work covering uh, some uh, college hockey and Jacques Cloutier whose English is still a little <laughs> fractured he just uh, chimes in when he can Krieger finds for peak he's checked by Yanni Secor shoots scores Good work by Trent Yanni up on the boards in the neutral ice zone. Allowed Secord to come up with this puck. And now Secord, one of the few players left in the game without a helmet, gets a break here as Yanni pins Verbeek to the boards. And Secord will just step over the blue line and whistle it right through Sidorkowitz for a commanding 7 3 lead. I think there will be a goaltender change for the Whalers here. And then Kay Whitmore will be going into the twine. Here's the shot again as Peter goes down a little early. He's, I'll tell you what, he's no fault of Peter Sidorkowicz. He's been bombarded tonight. It's no fun being yanked, but I'll tell you, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. You want to see what Whitmore can do. And Taylors will visit Calgary, Edmonton, Vancouver, LA, and then Boston before hosting the Bruins January 17th. Now this one is in the history books as the final game of the 80s for the Hartford Whalers and Chicago Blackhawks. Chevrier the winning goalie and Mike Keenan's Blackhawks prevail 7 to 3 over the Whalers tonight. We'll return with our final comments in just a moment.